forget is that Jesus had an, ex, had an expression, he had a statement that he made that was, I found, rather challenging for me, but that he said that every idle word that we spoke, we would give an account for it. For me, that doesn't sound so good, <laughs> because if you're like me, then you waste a lot of words, and the reality is, is that he told us, let your words be few. In other words, pick carefully and think about what you're saying before you say it. Because a lot of times people waste words and create an environment where people don't understand what you're saying, but then interpret it to what you don't mean and cause a negative reaction or a angry reaction to what you might not be saying but what they hear or understand what you're speaking and in communication if we choose better the words that we speak then it's easier to overcome those boundaries sometimes that we put up because of our own poor choice and become wiser in having selected the words that we choose than just automatically being flip about it and just pissing someone off or ticking them off and then ignoring them because we're told that if we create that burden of angry, angry response that we need to reconcile ourselves to that person and reconciling ourselves to people is one of the forgotten things in Christianity today. Most people will go on their way and ignore trying to reconcile differences of opinion that may not have anything to do with the relationship that God gave for both people to be one in the Spirit and one in the Lord. The sooner we realize that it's our own words lots of times that come back to bite us, the sooner we'll understand what Jesus meant when he said, you reap what you sow. In God Calling, my standard, carry out my commands and leave the result to me. Do this as obediently and faithfully as you would expect a child to follow out a given rule in the working of a sum, a math equation, with no question about that. If the working out is done according to command, the result will be right. When you take one plus one, it equals one most of the time. <laughs> Remember that the commands I have given you have already worked out by me in the spirit world to produce in your case and in your circumstances the required result. So follow my rules faithfully. Let's say that again. Remember that the commands I have given you have already been worked out by me in the spirit world to produce in your case and in your circumstances the required result. So follow my rules faithfully. Realize that herein lies the perfection of divine guidance. To follow a rule laid down, even by earth's wisest, might lead to disaster. The knowledge of your individual life and character, your capabilities, your circumstances, and temptations must be, to some extent, lacking. But to follow my direct guidance means to carry out instructions given with a full knowledge of who you are, what you are, and how you are and it will accomplish the required results that I have set forth. Each individual was meant to walk with me in this way, to act under divine control, strengthened by divine power. Have I not taught you to love simplicity? No matter what the world may think, earth's aims and intrigues, the world and its ways, are not for you. 
Do not be entrapped by those things which you see about you. O oh, my children, learn of me. Simplicity brings rest, true rest and power. To the world they may seem foolishness, but to me it is a foretaste of eternity. You know, and so many times people waste their time in political maneuverings, in social occasions, in social change that they want to create for how long? If you've lived long enough, you've seen that governments change, the boundary lines change, the nations change their names, they revolt, they become unrest, they change their way of thinking. One minute they may be a democratic nation, the next minute they may be totalitarian, the next minute they may be communist, the next minute they may be theocratic. The point being is that those things are temporary. In this world, most of what people do are temporary rather than eternal, which is why Jesus said to seek first his kingdom and those things that are of his kingdom than the things that are in the world and that are of the world. Because when you do, then really what you're saying is you're full of worldliness and not full of godliness. So the choice is up to you. Which would you be, worldly or godly? God wants you to be directed by Him, and that's godliness. If you're directed by anything else, it's worldliness.